what are the top expenses that you see for realtors that they incur? Vehicle expenses is the number one expense that I see for the realtors. Advertising, um, generally your communications, cell phone, internet. Hi, David Parker here with Parker Realty Office. Today we got Destin Cobb from Carl Reeves and Ingram. Uh, Destin is the uh, managing partner at the Crestview, Florida office. Um, he's a CPA, also a CVA. And Destin, what exactly is a CVA? It's a certified valuation analyst, which means that I am certified to value people's businesses when they have buy or sell transactions. Is Carl Riggs and Ingram a local firm or do you have offices in other areas? So we have uh, offices all across. We stretch from New Mexico to down south in Florida, up through the Carolinas. So we have a vast network of people. We have over 300 partners and almost 2,000 professionals that work for the firm. And so we can reach out to those people to help us make sure that we're servicing our clients. But at the same time, when you come into our office, we try to have a nice small office feel so that you have that personal relationship and that you deal with the same people over and over again. But again, having that network to be able to rely on is a very nice thing for us. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about tax questions today. Uh, it's end of the year, it's past the end of the year, but you gotta get all your documents ready. Destin, do I need to get a W-9 from an S-Corp, C-Corp, LLC, sole proprietor, um, and do I need to send out a 1099 to each one of them or how does that work? Great question. So you can tell if an entity is incorporated by the fact that or if they're a corporation by having comma INC behind their name. They are required to do that if they are organized as a corporation. However, we were talking about LLCs earlier. LLCs can be a bunch of different things, right? And so on that W-9 form, there's a question that says, if you're an LLC, how are you taxed? So if the LLC is taxed as a corporation, you are not required to issue a 1099 to them. Okay. And the only way that you're going to know that is by having them fill out that W-9. So I would say, if in question, then issue a 1099 to all individuals and all LLCs, and then you've covered all of your bases. It shouldn't matter anyways, because those people doing business should be reporting all of their income regardless. And so whether they get a 1099 or nine or not, it should not impact the way that they file their tax return. So if you're doing business with an ethical person, they should be happy to fill out that W-9 for you. Sure. And if you end up sending a W-9 or a 1099 to a corporation, there's no harm, no foul, no penalty for you to do that. That is correct. You, you, you are happy to send a 1099 to a corporation. There's nothing inappropriate by doing that. You're just not required to do it. And, and it protects you. Just yes, in case. sir. Okay, perfect. Destin, some of the questions I hear about there out there in the real estate from other realtors is, what about a vehicle? Should I deduct mileage? That's a great question, David. Um, so there's two options when it comes to vehicle expenses from the IRS. We can take mileage on your vehicle or we can take actual expenses. If you calculate your mileage, right, and you keep track of those miles, and let's say that you use your vehicle 80% of the time for business and 20% of the time for personal, then 80% of that interest is deductible. Oh wow, that's now, good to know. So either way, whether you're doing mileage or actual, you should be tracking your mileage so that we can figure out what that business use percentage is. Because if you take the actual deductions, right, we still want to take that mileage log to be able to prove that we use your vehicle for 80% business. And so the actual method of deducting your automobile expenses would be to take that applicable per percentage of your business mileage multiplied by the actual cost of your vehicle, the cost of the fuel, the cost of your insurance, repairs and maintenance, any improvements that you make to it, right? Plus interest and bridge tolls. 
And so when we put all of that stuff together in a blender, right, mm -hmm. and we figure out what does it cost you to truly operate your vehicle on a mileage basis? So the example that I give is, is you go out and buy a used vehicle for really cheap that gets great gas mileage, right? You throw all that into a blender and it costs you on average 30 cents per mile to operate that vehicle. You get a tax deduction for a dollar that you don't have to spend. That's the best thing possible. And that's a beautiful thing. Right. Now, if you go out and buy a brand new Suburban for $90,000 that gets 12 miles to the gallon or whatever they get, right? High oil change costs, high tire costs, when you get all that stuff, you put that all together and it might cost you a dollar per mile to operate that vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting the deductions that you deserve. So a uh, brand new expensive vehicle with bad gas mileage is a clear actual vehicle inexpensive vehicle that gets good gas mileage lends, lends itself towards mileage and then somewhere in the middle those crossover vehicles and you can do this on a vehicle per vehicle basis so if you use more than one vehicle for your business use then you can choose actual or mileage as it relates to each vehicle okay just another expense that i hear people talk about is what meals deductible uh, can I deduct all my meals, a portion of my meals? David, uh, it depends on how you document the business purpose of the meal. So we need the time, the place, who was present, and the business purpose of that meal, okay? And so you all have the time and place on the receipt, certainly. And then you would want to write down and document who was present and what business was discussed or what was the business purpose of that meal. So after that long day showing real estate all day long, if you guys had a meal to d discuss and recap the day and then organize yourself to make sure that you have a action plan for the following day on how you're going to follow up on all of the things that you did that day and you documented it as such, then that meal would be a deductible business meal. For 2021 and 2022, the IRS has made it so that 100% of meals in eaten in restaurants are deductible at 100%. Normally it's 50%. And so um, going into the future, that meal would be deductible at 50%, but for 2021 and this year, 2022, we can get 100% write off for that meal that you've eaten. Is that due to COVID or is there any? It is due to COVID. They were, you know, with, uh, with all the shutdown and restrictions that had happened, um, they are trying to incentivize people going out and, uh, you know, uh, trying to revitalize the restaurant industry that was hit hard due to the pandemic. Okay. Can I deduct uh, any I take any deductions for my home or for my house or anything like that? You can as long as you operate your business out of your home. So the first rule is you can't have an office, a physical office space outside of your home and have a home office deduction. So as, as long as you do not have an office outside of your home and you operate your business in your home, then you can take that home office deduction. And so what has to happen there is you have to have an area that's specifically designated as office area. It can't be used as any other activity other than your office. And so that spare bedroom, if it has a bed in it, it's going to be precluded from being your home office. If I have a filing cabinet at my house and I buy it specifically for my real estate and that's all I use it for. Is that an actual expense I can take? Absolutely, because that is a business use asset. So we're just talking about allocating what would normally be personal deductions, right? Your utility bills and your home mortgage interest as business or a portion of that as business expenses. But any expense that is a true ordinary and necessary business expense, such as a filing cabinet, okay. right? that would be deductible. It's no different than the business use vehicle percentage, right? Right. Um, so that, uh, just because you have an office in a brokerage doesn't preclude you from deducting those business assets. 
All right, Destin, so uh, what are the ways, you know, can I save some money on my taxes? Health insurance is a big one for self-employed individuals. So if you are self-employed, you can take your self-employed health insurance against your income that you've earned, which is a huge deduction for a lot of realtors. Um, having to find that health insurance on their own, we want to make sure that we get that deduction for them. And so you need to be tracking that, whether it's on the marketplace that you get it or whether you just find your own policy. Make sure that you're tracking that and give that information to your CPA so that they can calculate that self-employed health insurance deduction for you. Destin, how much money can be contributed to an HSA? So for 2021, the individual contribution limit to a health savings account is $3,600 and $7,200 for a family plan. Okay. And so you can put those dollars in there and for 2021, all the way until April 15th of 2022. So you can retroactively make those health savings accounts contributions as long as you don't file your income tax return before you make those health savings account contributions. So today we can make that contribution and get the benefit of it for our 2021 taxes, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Now you mentioned something about uh, investing that money. Yes. So depending on what institution that you park those dollars with, uh, generally they require you to keep a minimum account balance in cash. And then once you've exceeded that threshold, generally about a thousand bucks, they will let you take those other dollars and move them to an investment account. And so that you can truly invest those dollars in mutual funds or stock driven investments, right? And let those dollars grow and grow tax free. And they're not just sitting there idle, they're actually growing and becoming an asset to you. Absolutely. So it's just another way to both save tax and build wealth for your family. All right. We've had some great information, great conversations here, Destin. I encourage you to reach out to Destin Cobb and his team at Carr, Riggs & Ingram. Give them the opportunity to help you save money on taxes. Destin, thanks for being here today. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Um, I highly recommend that you go consult a tax professional that you can trust and rely on. Um, I always tell people that you bargain shop commodities and you get what you pay for in the service-based industry. And so please go seek a reliable tax professional to help you navigate this tax season or any tax season that you need help with.